then if you take the number 8 million, and we're in 2022, and you say, I think this sport could grow by 30% a year. Uh, if that happens, you know, 8 becomes 11, and 11 becomes 15, and by 2030, you're at 40 million players. And I call that 40 by 30. And I think if you look at our mission of what we're doing at MLP and Duper, it's to get to that 40 by 30. Sure. So Steve, a lot of people in the sport know who you are and what you've been doing. One of the things that I think would be sort of interesting is how did you get to the point that you saw the vision for pickleball as opposed to a game that you were just enjoying playing? Yeah, well, uh, well, I first played pickleball a little over six years ago now. I was told about the sport from my nephew, Keenan, who you happen to know. I know you've, you've played, we played some rec games with, with my nephew, and he told me about this sport called pickleball, and I, I had never heard of it. He said, you got to try it. You're going to love it. Uh, I Google places to play pickleball, Austin, Texas, and I found the Bethany Church gym on a Wednesday <laughs> night. And uh, I tell people it was, it was literally love, love at first hit. I went there without a paddle. Uh, people lent me a paddle. They taught me how to play. Yeah, it's, it, and that's you know, just so typical of the pickleball community. It's, it's very welcoming. It's, uh, I, I, I affectionately call it a cult because you're, you're welcomed in if you're, if you're interested in it. And, uh, I loved it, and I literally the next day started telling people that uh, that pickleball was going to be the next big sport, and that the next big entertainment idea, the next top golf was going to be a pickleball bar. Uh, that, that was before the first chicken and pickle opened in Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, and I look back and like, I, I try to think, like, why did I believe that? Or what was it about the sport? And here, here's one step that I love to talk about when I talk about why pickleball is addictive. Obviously, again, it, we, we talk about how, how uh, inclusive it is, how people of various ages, fitness levels, I could, I could lose a few right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, different genders can all, play, can all play the sport and enjoy it. Uh, a bunch of three O's playing together have as much fun playing as a bunch of four O's playing together, as, as yeah, much fun yeah. as a bunch of five O's playing together. That's unique. Not all sports are like that. But here's the stat that I think really seals it for me and why pickleball is addictive is yeah, I love tennis. I still play tennis. I watch tennis. Don't, get mad, don't be mad, tennis people. But in an hour of pickleball, you'll hit the ball ten times as much yeah. as an hour of tennis. And it's fun to hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that, it's as simple as that. And you get to hit the ball more in pickleball. Very cool. And did you, um, I've known you long enough that I've seen your evolution in the game. When did you start to see the big picture that you thought that this thing had the capabilities of really going big yeah. worldwide? Well, yeah, I, I saw it in, in the, the joy of the people there. Again, it's for, for people who are uh, in pickleball, it's a mission. It's not just a game, it's a mission. And uh, I try to I share that vision uh, with potential partners for MLP and Duper and sponsors. Like, if you're a sponsor of pickleball, and actually even more if you're not an endemic sponsor, yeah. and you come in and support this sport, I'm telling you, people are gonna love you. Yeah. People are gonna love you for that. That, that will win you a lot of loyalty. Um, and I just saw that, that I saw the joy myself in playing. I saw the, you know, how many, how many you know, USA Pickleball you know, ambassadors do you know who put in hundreds, thousands of hours for no money? Yeah. It, it's, it's, that is the, the, the sport. And that's got to be, that's, it is valuable and it's going to get more valuable. You know, we'll talk about my vision for how many people are about to play this sport. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think we're even close to where we're going to be in the very near future. One of the things that's neat, here we are at Major League Pickleball in Newport Beach, California. Spectacular weather, the crowds are starting to gather. When did you figure out that team was the approach to the sport of pickleball as opposed yeah. to the typical tennis variant? Yeah, uh, I just think it's more fun. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm also a golf fan and I, I'll watch the PGA Tour events and love them. But when the Ryder Cup is on, it's, it's a different level. Yeah, it's, it's so exciting. And uh, I think the, the you know, players want to win for their own career and they want to advance, they, they, want, to do, well, they want to be successful, they want, their sponsor, yeah, they want to get sponsorship, et cetera. But when you're also playing 
for your other two teammates who are sitting and watching you, it's a different level of pressure. And it's amazing what I think this brings out in the players. They, they really, they want to win not only for themselves, but for their team. And yeah, we just had our first match here uh, just moments ago with uh, Simone Jarjim and Lina Patagamaite playing the Brasha sisters, Maggie and Mary. I mean, the level of that match was in amazing. 21-18 uh, and every point. There, there, were, there were 10 highlight reel points out of, out of 39 points. It, it, was, it was magical. And that, just the level of play that this, I think this format brings out is, is, is awesome. And yeah, I, I think a lot of the players would tell you that this is their favorite event. And because, I hear because that. of that. You know, one of the things that is really interesting to me now, I've been at a number of these events and you see that energy and excitement. When do you see this transitioning, or do you see this transitioning into the rec game? Oh, absolutely. We are already working on the ability for players to play in MLP formats for amateurs uh, starting next year. So uh, we're going we're gonna to build a duper slash MLP national team tournament. And here's how it'll work. How, how do you make that work? How do you make that fair? Uh, we'll have teams at various levels of, 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 of ability. The highest level might, might be, say, duper 20. That means you add up the four dupers of your, team, your teammates, mm -hmm. and they got to equal 20 or less. Yep. Uh, then you'll play other teams that are duper 20. We can have a duper 18 level, duper 16 level, duper 14 level. Here's what's fun about this, and this is what's, first of all, you get to go to the event with three of your friends, and you get to have a great time. Win, lose, or draw, you're going to have a lot of fun at this event. But what's going to be crazy to watch is, we all have duper 20 teams that might be four senior women playing against four junior 15-year-old yep. boys and, and every, every combination thereof. Because yeah. you make your team you want. And, and, and you know, duper, we believe our, our rating is universal. It's, yeah, it's, it's a based on your results. And yeah, whether you're four senior women, if you're a 20 duper team playing another 20 duper team, it's going to be a close match. And... You know, we see the excitement when we go to the Dream Breaker in MLP, and it's men versus women. You know, you ought to just mention how the Dream Breaker uh, yeah. works. Sure. So, uh, an MLP match, uh, we do in MLP with the pros, we, we have it set up specifically two men and two women. In the amateur side, we're not going to limit it to that, but we have two, men, two male pros and two female pros form a team. When they play another team, we, uh, in MLP, the first match is always women's doubles, and then men's doubles, and then there's two mixed doubles matches. Uh, but if it ends 2-2, we go to a singles format where each player rotating plays four points. And one team sets their lineup based on a coin draw, and the other team gets to match up however they want. And what we see often is if you have a really dominant male singles player, they'll sometimes match up with kind of their weaker female player to thinking, we're probably going to lose three or four of those points anyway, and, and then they'll try to win the other one. Sure. And, and we'll try to win the other three. And that means you see a lot of male versus female play in singles. And already we've seen some of the most iconic sports points in pickleball when we've seen those matchups. Yeah, you know, the, the point with uh, Anna Lee and uh, Riley Newman yeah. last year. Uh, I think it's got five million views on TikTok or something. Yeah. It was a crazy point. Yeah, when uh, I, Deckel. Declan, forgive me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. He hates it. He hates it when I do this. The Lee but, Whitwell moment. But he lost four points in a row to Lee Whitwell. Uh, that that one hurt a little bit. That yeah. one hurt a little bit. Yeah. But and, I, and uh, sorry, Declan. You know, you'll, you'll, <laughs> mea culpa. So cool. Now you know one of the things that's been interesting for me to watch is where we started off the MLP in uh, uh, Dripping Springs, uh, yeah. Texas, where you're based and all of your entities are. Now we're in in um, uh, Newport Beach, California. Yeah. What do you see happening with your team owners? Do you see different team sites beginning to become a factor? Absolutely. So our, our next event's going to be in Columbus, Ohio, the home of the bus. Hence the Columbus. In case I wasn't uh, clear. Uh, amazing. Uh, amazing new owner to our league, and they have a great facility. Uh, so we're, we're bringing it to to Columbus, and then next year, you know, we're going to take we're going to take the show on the road. Um, I think it's important for building our brand for our sponsors to to have this event all over the country. Uh, you know, we we didn't have an MLP event it, per se in New York, but we we did our our draft uh, there for the for the year, and uh, we had you know an amazing amazing experience there where we are able to get 
Uh, we played in the, the New York Stock Exchange. We played, a, we played a pickleball match, the first sporting event ever in the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, we did you know, a lot of local you know, TV news channels. Uh, we were, you know, Fox and Friends. We were getting you know, just great media for the sport, bringing people in. Also, obviously, good for our sponsors as well, because we're mentioning our sponsors at every one of those. So, we're, we, we think bringing this around the country is part of spreading the word about the sport. Cool. You know, one of the things that I did want to ask you that I think is really important because you have the unique perspective, where do you see this going in the next four to six yeah. years and then 10 years? Yeah. So uh, I, I, I say to, uh, so I, uh, I believe we already have 8 million players. You hear that number 5 million? I think that's wrong. I think based on Google searches, uh, ball sales, et cetera, I think you can extrapolate that we already have 8 million people playing the sport. Uh, but let's 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 take that as uh, as, as truth. <laughs> I think it is true. Uh, then, if you take the number eight million, and we're in 2022, and you say, I think the sport could grow by 30 percent a year. Uh, if that happens, you know, eight becomes 11, and 11 becomes 15, and by 2030, you're at 40 million players, and I call that 40 by 30, and I think. If you look at our mission of what we're doing at MLP and Duper, it's to get to that 40 by 30. Sure. That means, so here's some crazy things about what that means. That means of the players who are playing in 2030, 80% of them haven't played yet. Right. That's, that's mind blowing. That's a crazy, that's a crazy thought. Yeah, it is the idea of players coming in and the rate of multi-million per year coming into the sport is insane. So what I say to that is, why don't we examine everything about the sport to try and make it more fun, more engaging, uh, whether that's different formats, like a team format, whether that's different types of tournaments, like the one we're having today here, at water, the waterfall event for Duper. Well, I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, and how can we, in the scoring system, like, okay, I, I, this, this, one, this one gets everybody crazy. <laughs> but here's what I say about, I know we have a scoring system, and there are a lot of people who really, really love it. But I ask, I ask a serious question to everyone. Let's say that we were starting with a blank slate and we proposed two scoring systems. One was rally scoring and one was this system. Yes. Where it starts off with zero, zero, two, and then you have two surge and you switch. Uh, would anybody from a blank slate choose sure. the current system? And I, I think if, you, if it's a fair person answering that question, the answer is zero percent of people would choose that one. It doesn't. It, it's so much harder. It's so much more complicated. Like, and, and if you're trying to reach the sport, not only nationally but internationally, and people are watching it, and the score is four, five, two, so often I get the question like, what does that even mean? Sure. Whereas sure. the score is four, five, everybody understands what that means. Well, I think it's a better. I think it's better. So again, sorry, one more thing. If eighty percent of the people six years from they haven't played yet, why don't we just go ahead and make the change now? Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it is having played my first MLP scoring system yeah. match yesterday, yeah. it's remarkable how fast and easy you segue into it and it's, you're halfway through a game and it's, oh yeah, got this. And it's uh, you, simple and clean. You don't have to worry about stacking. You don't have to, you know, it moves faster. And that also means that you play a match, you play a match faster. It's more efficient court use. You're not, Thinking about all the you know, the, yeah, I, I when I'm watching a pro match with the, when they use the other scoring system and they serve on the wrong side of the receivers the wrong it, just, it makes, makes me cringe. I don't like it. I, nobody nobody thinks that that's good. Sure, sure. And, yeah, these players are working their tail off. They're tired, and they were and they got to figure it out like whether they're stacking. You know, it, it's just I, I don't think it's. I, don't, I think the rally scoring system, obviously, I think it's better. And if we have, again, if 80% of people who are going to play six years from now, haven't, eight years from now, haven't played yet, let, let's, let's, let's suck it up and change it now. Well, and I think that one of the things that's interesting about this conversation this morning is the fact that as people start to, they simply need to realize these things are out there yeah. and give it a try and see what happens with it. And I think they'll have the same experience that, uh, that I did. Yeah. Now, I want to segue, though. Tell... Tell us about the other the parallel tournament that you've got going on yeah. here. So uh, I've also thought a lot about, so I, I, I think I, I wake up and think about how can I make this sport even more fun? Like that's kind of, that's, that's, that's what I, I think of as a challenge. And I, I think in, in my six years of playing pickleball and being fairly obsessed with it, I've only played, I think, four tournaments. And you'd ask, why would I only have played four tournaments? 
Well, first of all, there haven't been enough tournaments. It's hard, it's hard to sign up for one. It's some, there's a lot of tournaments where if you don't sign up in the first five minutes, you're out. So yeah. that's one problem. We need more courts, we need more venues, we need more tournaments. That, that's, that's part of the problem. But the other part of the problem is often the tournament experience is not that great. And again, I think we're stuck in a little bit of inertia often in that we, the, the, the standard form of a pickleball tournament has been a double elimination tournament. Here's the problem and my challenge I see with that. Say you travel to Naples, Florida, or you, you, know, you travel someplace Certainly. for a tournament. You bought an airline ticket, you have a hotel room, you're excited about playing, and you go to that tournament and you show up at 8 a.m., there's a chance that you're out in two matches and you're done at 9.30, and you're done for the day. Certainly. And, it, and by the way, that happens to literally one quarter of the field. <laughs> one, 25% of the players of that tournament are gonna to be out in two rounds, and they're not coming back. Sure. That is not leaving a good taste in their mouth. What we've done here with the waterfall event is say if you sign up for, a, for our event and say you start at 9 a.m., we guarantee you four matches in four hours. Even if you go lose, 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 you get a fourth match. And by the way, that starts at 9 a.m. The next one starts at 1 p.m. If you want to play another four matches, you can. You're able to do that. Yep. But you know what your bite size is. Again, you, you show up a double elimination at 9, at 9 a.m. You might be done at 10.30 or you might be done at 6 p.m. And you can't know. And you got to commit to your partner that you're going to be there all those hours. Yeah. And, and that's just not, hey, that's not how everybody lives anymore. Yeah. <laughs> this way, you could play up to three different waterfall events in a day, play 12 matches. You could play with the same partner or three different partners. And you know what your time frame is. It's also a way more efficient court use. In other words, when one, when one, our, our software says when one match ends, it automatically tells the next two teams to go on. Mm -hmm. we, 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 so it's better court use, which means more, more money for the venue operator. It's actually less staff because the software tells the players where to go, sure. and it's a better player experience. Yeah. And at the end of it, you end up all these all your matches start, count for your duper, which is going to we're going to have more and more competitions that require a duper, both local, regional, and national. You get all of that, and as a venue open operator, we think that that's an incredible value proposition. Now, on that order, one of the things that I think is exciting about talking to you is people that are listening to this and hearing about some of these things for the first time. How do you see them? How, what would be the way that they should get involved? How can they yeah. reach out to your organization and say, I'd like to give this a run? Yeah, yeah, go to yeah, myduper.com and reach out to uh, our team. Yeah, Jill Braverman's our CEO. Uh, our, our team there is amazing. Uh, they, yeah, they, they want you to be part of our system. They, they, they want clubs. They want you to run this waterfall event. And you're going to yeah, be able to talk to the to players who played in this and Hopefully, they're, they're going to tell you what a great experience this is, how, how game-changing it is for the sport. And again, for the venue operator, it's, it's more profitable. And, and, and it, it's better and more profitable. That's a, that's a win-win. Cool. cool. Well, that's got to serve greatly because we're running into such facilities challenges yeah. and access that the ability of making it more efficient has to be a positive. Well, well that and be, because of this software, I hope, that will make facilities more profitable, which means there'll be more facilities. Correct. It, it, we, this is the, the virtuous circle that we're trying to build. And then we have MLP to show rally scoring, to talk about the waterfall event. We're, we're trying to build kind of an infrastructure to, to talk about ways that we can innovate and try, and, and try different things to make the sport even more joyful. And look, I'm, not every one of our ideas is gonna be engaged or and not all our ideas are right or perfect. I, I, no, I would be foolish to, to say that. I don't, I don't think that. I do think they're interesting. I think they're worth trying. And if you don't like it, that's fine. It, it, it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make me a good person. It doesn't make a, but I, I think some of these ideas are worth trying. And I think you'll find that if you have an open mind, some of, some of these ideas I think are going to make the sport even better. Cool. You know, we've been talking about this term, duper. And that duper is the... Yeah. Uh, the uh, a dynamic universal pickleball rating system. You ought to, that's taken on a taken on the sport by storm. And there's so many people who now just simply refer anymore to what's yeah. their duper rating. Did it go up? Did it yeah. go down? Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, here's one thing that I, I'm I'm really I think is good about the duper system is it it, it accounts for the you know, the score like the how how close the match was in 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 assessing how good you are. So let me, let, me, let me explain it this way. Let's, let's say that I was a 5-0. You know, I'm not a 5-0. I'm sadly a little, a little lower than that. But, uh, and I play uh, Ben Johns in singles. And he's a 7-0. Uh, and let's say we play uh, 
Duper would tell you he's supposed to beat me, you know, basically probably like 11-1, 11-1. <laughs> and, yeah, and I think I, I would probably take that, to be honest. I, yeah. I, probably, <laughs> I, I, would, I would probably brag about if I, if I actually got one in both games. Uh, if, I, if I play Ben Johns and I win the first game 11-4 and lose the next two 11-9, 11-9, uh, under Duper, my rating would go up. That would tell me, that would tell, we should learn from that, that I'd have to be a world-class player to have that result. That I won, I actually won over 50% of the points, like against Ben Johns, with that many points, that's, that's remarkable. And uh, that means that we can, that my rating on that, that day would go up and ben, Ben's would go down. If he let me get, you know, have that result, he's, you know, he's probably not, maybe, maybe he's not a seven after all. Uh, and that to me, now, and under every other system that I believe exists in pickleball rating system, with that result, and under every other system, my rating would go down because mm -hmm. I lost. Under the other rating system, there's one data point. Did you win the match or did you lose the match? Right. Under our system, we say there's you know, 50 data points, and I won 26 points a day. Like, that's, that to me gets you to a way more accurate rating much faster. So we've seen, we've seen this, like, uh, I remember uh, not long ago, I think it was Ryler DeHart played Ben Johns and actually won a set and then lost the match. And, uh, and I was like, and I, and I watched it and it was, you know, it was, it was an amazing match. Ben played out of his mind, which he often does and end up winning, but he was stretched. And I said, and I looked at Ryler's duper rating, it wasn't that high. And I said, his ratings, yeah, it's gonna go up after this match, yep. and he's going higher. Yep. Like, and that was, like, that's what a rational person, like, yeah, here's, here's another way of putting it. Say player A plays Ben Johns and loses 11-1, 11-1, and player B plays Ben Johns and loses 11-9, 11-9. If A plays B, I would bet on B. Here, here, like, you, yeah. You, like, and it, 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 if, you, if, if that's your prediction, Duper is designed to be the most accurate way of predicting what a match result yeah. is. You should use all the data you can to be able to be a better predictor. Sure. And that's what we do. And, I, I, and again, I believe we're the only system that does that. Um, and I think that's why we get to an accurate rating faster. We, we think you can get to an accurate Duper rating by coming to a Duper, and we have Duper rating camps now, where you play you know, seven, seven games in an hour and a half, and at the end of that, Time, you have an accurate duper rating probably within point 0.1 or point 0.2. Now, you just said you do duper camps. I was not aware of that. Tell yep. me how that works. That sounds like a cool so, possibility. So many clubs have players that want to know what their rating is. Sure. And if you've ever run a pickleball club, and they, they, they historically done like rating assessments where you hit some balls in front of the pro, you play a few points, and they give you a rating. Well, I'll tell you, if you've ever done that as a pro or Get ready. If, if if the person doesn't like the answer for some tears or some anger, yeah. it, it is an uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable situation. Uh, if you if you give some people an accurate assessment of, of where they are right that moment, doesn't mean they can't get better. But if you do that, you might lose a customer. You might lose a friend. You might yeah. You might yeah. That it, has certainly it, happened. It is not comfortable. If you say, hey, you're going to come to this event, and over an hour and a half, you're going to play a bunch of different people. Different, different partners and different opponents. And at the end of that, we have an accurate rating for you. And by the way, it's, a, it's determined by your results. Right. I don't have, it's not my opinion yeah. about whether, what, what rating you are. That's a lot more comfortable for yeah. everybody. Well, and by the way, if you don't like your, if you don't like your duper, you know, get some better results. Right. It's, 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 it's on you. It's not, it's not someone telling you how good you are, which again is, is yeah, never comfortable. I remember not liking my some radio assessment. I I I I, I, I hate to be that guy, but I, I was that guy too. I yeah. I didn't like it. I'm better than that. Well, you know, the fact <laughs> is is that is that the, the one of the biggest challenges we've got in the existing tournament cycle is sandbagging. It's just insane. Well, let me give you some stats on that. And we've looked at amateur tournament results, and uh, with 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 the current rating system being operating, and We've looked at those results and then analyzed using our, what our duper results are for, for the, the duper rating for the teams in those events. So they'll give you some stats. So uh, yeah, you have, say, men's 4.0, which is supposed to be between 4.0 and you know, 4.499. Right. Uh, when we've looked at 
those brackets for various organizations. I'm not picking on anybody in terms of, you know. But the typical true rating gap between the best and worst team is well over a point. And it typically, it's supposed to be 0.5. Yeah. It's typically well over a point. So another stat that's, in, that's interesting is if you had well narrow brackets of teams that were really cl close to each other, then in matches that are two out of three matches, they should go to the third set pretty often. Maybe yeah. not quite 50%, but maybe 35 or 40% of the time. Yeah. That, that should happen if you have close matches. The, and an average, average return, it, it goes to the third set on less than 20% of the time. Yeah. That's a damning statistic. Sure that tells you the team that wins is, 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 just, is just that much better. And here's another, another damning statistic. We took, we took our amateur fields. Let's say there's a, a, a field of 40 teams and we assessed which teams were the best using Duper. And we said, we're gonna give ourselves a challenge. Out of those 40 teams, we're gonna pick four. No. We're gonna take the top 10% of the Duper ratings of those 40 teams. Guess how often we got the gold medalist? Frequently, I'm guessing. 80%. Yeah. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> that, is, that is not a good, that sure. tells you, yeah. uh, the average Duper rating of a team that won a men's 4-0, uh, which again, you're supposed to be no higher than a you know, 4.49 or 4 point, you know, whatever, 4.499, you know, I was over five. Yeah, yeah. And it, again, the tournament organizers, historically, they didn't have another alternative. They didn't have a choice. There was no other rating system that was more accurate. And you know, what are you gonna do? You know, right. But now they do have a choice. Yeah. And I, yeah, look, I'm biased, so yeah. No, but I'm biased and I'm selling, so and, that's and, what I do. And the reason, but I, I think if you're running an amateur tournament and you don't use Duper now, especially if there's any idea of like you know, prize money or other other gateways to other things, I I I don't think that's great. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's an understatement. One of you, the things that I've point. seen in terms of my own Duper rating and the tournaments that I play in and the players that I play against is the fact that I think as that becomes more and yeah. more accepted standard, it will eliminate the two and outs to 80% of those people that are, 75% of those people that are going to their first event. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's two and out at 11-2, 11-2. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's miserable. Right. And if you, again, if you traveled and that's what your experience is, yeah. that's, that's not good. It's not great for the sport. We're not gonna get the 40 by 30 if we're giving that experience to people. You know, the, the, as you mentioned the 40 by 30 again, one of the things that is, is I wanted to ask you is, with everything that you've done and the success and the acceptance of Duper so quickly and so fast in the sport, have you thought at all about the tournament management software? I would wonder if your team couldn't do something there that could well, we're, help. We're, we're, well, today, the Waterfall Tournament, these tournaments of 16, brackets of 16 teams, it runs itself. The software runs itself. You don't, you literally, without a, without a staff, you can run a tournament. You give me six courts, I'll put 16 teams on it, and the software, you, as soon as you're done with your match, you put a score in, it tells you now you're in the queue, it tells the two teams that were in the queue, you're now on this court. It does. We're we're there. And then, yeah, you know, when we went to the national team tournaments, we're gonna have. We, our goal is to give software to venues that let them run events much easier, that are much better, cool, and again, more profitable at the same yeah. time. All those things. It, it, it has to be all of them. Very nice indeed. All right. Well, we're going to segue into one other piece of the Steve Kuhn world, and that is Dreamland. Mm. You came up with a facility that's turned out to be amazing. Tell the viewers a little bit who don't know, who haven't been to Austin, Texas, what Dreamland is and what your vision is there. Well, let me start with the kind of the overriding vision of Dreamland, kind of the philosophical mission of it is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I talk a lot about how I think the brand of the American dream is arguably the most powerful brand in human history. Even people that don't speak English were willing to risk their lives for that brand historically and, and continue to do so today. And uh, I, I think that's amazing. I think the ability for our country to, to, turn, to, to transform people from all over the world and become Americans is special and if you, uh, if you Google Ronald Reagan's last speech, he talks about that and how, what a magical thing that is. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very much a believer that that's, that's you know, in some ways, the most magical and most biggest advantage we have as a country is that amazingly talented, hardworking people want to come here. And finding ways to, to, to make that possible legally will, will 
will make it better for everybody if we can find a compromise. Sure. In a, yeah. And so, and, and by the way, you know, lest you think this is like you know, a red or a blue thing, I, I, I've been talking about this for over a decade. It's not about any one party or one president. I think there are good people of goodwill on both parties on this issue, but we need to we need to find a, a better path than where we are right now because I think we're damaging that brand. And I think it's a very powerful and, and, and valuable brand. The, the other thing about Dreamland is you know, because I love America so much, I, I see the divisions in America and uh, it worries me. I, I, it concerns me. And what I've told people is even during some of the most divisive times, sometimes the last few years, I think, in our country's history, very rarely to never do I hear a political debate on a pickleball court. Uh, people from all, all walks of life, all political parties, all ages, races, you name it, on a pickleball court, they're all welcome. And we need more things like that. Uh, there was a book in the 1980s warning that America could get more divided because we weren't doing as much things together. It was a book called Bowling Alone. Uh, and I remember reading that book and saying, well, yeah, that, that's scary because I, I see the point. We, we don't have as many things that we go out of our home, get away from our screens, and we meet people we wouldn't otherwise meet. That's happening less often. And I see in Pickleball a chance for that to be reversed. Hmm, interesting. And Dreamland has to have Pickleball because of that, because we need to bring our country back together. Uh, the other things we have, mini golf. Everybody loves mini golf. Nobody talks about politics when they're playing mini golf. Yeah. Like, Everything we have there, music, the things that, that brings people together, even if they're politically divided. Like, everything there is, is to try and, you know, and we have a giant U.S. flag because we, we, we believe that this country is great. We have a great history. We have a great mission. And we need to keep it together, people. We need to, yeah. we need to find ways to interact with each other, even if we don't always agree, and, have, and, be, and do that joyfully. And Dreamland is really an effort to do to do that. That's that's really the mission. Well, Dreamland. having been there numerous times, I know you're hitting it on that. One of the things that you did there that's been unique in the sport is you brought together the greatest concentration of elite level pro athletes in the pickleball space. Um, is that something that you think you could replicate anywhere else? Would you? How how will Dreamland will that expand outside of Austin, Texas? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, it's, it's possible. Um, I do think we need to, that, that, that mission of joy needs to be, yeah, need, we, need, we need more of it. But you know, look, there are other people who are, it's certainly in the pickleball world, there are other people who are doing a great job. Like, you know, the, they're pickle, chicken and pickle and a lot of other people, you know, uh, pickleball social, all, all these groups are coming in with great, great concepts doing a great job of bringing more people in. So, like, I think Dreamland could do that too, but there's other people who are doing a fantastic job with that as well. I'd like to support them with, our, with, with Duper and, and, and by partnering, partnering with them to help create, make, make sure that everybody there has an even better experience. Uh, but it doesn't, I, I, I do hope Dreamland expands, and I hope there's, there's future ones, but it's not, it's not only, it doesn't have to be only Dreamland. That, that's, that, that other people are doing great jobs as well, and I, I support them. Well, you know, one of the things that, though, that when I ask that question is it isn't so much about the, the specifics of yeah. how many locations, how many doors. It is the fact that, that in our sport, every time somebody has raised the bar to do something better, yeah. it's the new standard. And yeah. I think that that's the thing that I look forward to in the sport of seeing these facilities, wherever they're done, whomever does them, how uh, cool they can become. Well, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I actually might give you a scoop. Okay, we like scoops. Uh, it's so scoopy that I'm not even sure I'm going to do it yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then I'll keep moving along, and you see if you'll scoop us. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's like uh, we, we, we have a number of, you know, some of the most amazing players in the world living and training at Dreamland. And I've had the, the concept, and I've, I've now talked to a few people about it. We haven't decided to go forward yet, but... I want to create a, a pickleball camp experience for elite players who want to get to the next level. Yeah. Uh, it'll be intense. It'll be you know, uh, at most 16 players and a, and, and a minimum of four pros. So a lot of, hand, a lot of attention and it'll be expensive. <laughs> but 
Uh, we think, I, I think in we a four day camp experience. Uh, I think in four day, and, and, and it would be meaning elite meaning. I think you'd have to be a minimum of five zero male or four five four five seven female to even apply to be in the camp. Yeah. Um, you'd have to commit that you're going to be willing to be on the court, you know, six hours a day or or or, or more for those days and be ready for that. Um, and I, I think the goal would be in those four days that over the next three months, your duper would, would rise by 0.25. Wow. wow, wow, wow. Guaranteed. Yeah. Otherwise, you get some, some either refund or you get to, uh, get to come back to the camp again for free. Or, and I think we could deliver on that. And I think, I think it would be exciting. Look, if you're, maybe you're an older player and you, you want to get to the top of the senior game and you're, you're 5-0 and you really want to go to the real, real top of that. That would be something I think in three days we could help you advance in a way that you couldn't in six months otherwise. Or say you're a, a, you know, a relatively new tennis crossover. You just, you know, you're 22 years old, you just finished your NCAA career, and you're seeing the success of people like, you know, like Paris Todd and Anna Bright, and you say, I want to try that. And you, you've, got, you know, you're, you, you've gotten to a level where you're, you're close. This could get, you, could get you to the top of that, and I think in a hurry. And I think, and I, wanna, I already have a name for it. I'm, I'm big on, on branding. I, I want to call it uh, the Dreamland Elite Pickleball Training Hub. We got the, uh, we have the, uh, what's, what's We don't have the acronym yet. The yeah. acronym is DEPTH. DEPTH, oh Dreamland yes. Dreamland Elite Pickleball Training Hub. The DEPTH, because we're going to go in depth into your game. We are going to, we're going to examine your game and, and, and really, really try to get you to the next level. So. Yeah. We haven't committed to this yet, but at but that's really it, so. It, look, those look, are, tell me if you, if if you think there's an audience for that. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, one of the things that's unique in the amount of traveling that I do in the pickleball space is the people that I meet throughout the country. Yeah. The 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 things that are happening is the distillation of of tournaments coming down, but now how good are the tournaments? What's the yeah. experience, the yes. player experience yeah. that they're looking for? Those are the things that have yet to be filtered through yep. that I think we're still on, which was why I was so excited to hear your perspectives yep. and where you think this stuff is going. Um, I, I, I think we're absolutely ready for that. And I don't think you'd have, I think you'd have a problem with, with 16 players would flush so fast. It would be, I, well, I hope you're right. Yeah. Well, I, I think we, we might announce this and we'll see if, we'll see if, if that's right. Cool. But here, here's the other thing that's really cool about it is if we do this, we're accountable. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, literally, we will publish the list of the 16 players and their dupers coming in. Yeah. And we're gonna say, we're gonna be publicly accountable. And you're gonna be able to go on our, myduper.com and track oh, their dupers. Player. And if we, if we don't do a good job, hey, we, we don't deserve to be in business. Right. We don't deserve, right. we don't deserve your money. Like, imagine that. Like, if we're really gonna make our camp experience, we're gonna have accountability to be yeah. able to show whether we're actually helping players or not. Yeah. That to me is exciting. Yeah, that I, I, really I think is. that's. That, I, I that think is that's, game changing. I think that's game changing. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll, we'll. Yeah, I think we would then say to other camps, "Hey, do you want to? Do you want to use Duper to, to demonstrate? Do you want to try and prove that you're good? And do you want to use Duper to help you do that? Yeah. And we'll, we'll work with. It doesn't have to be just just the Dreamland camp. We would we would let camps throughout the country, let them say if they, do you want to be accountable? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the accountability thing is I that's, mean, that's really the change. Uh, uh, so we are duper. We predict. We publish predict, match predictions before the match happens, <laughs> and we, you know, and sometimes we're not right. Yeah. But we're we're accountable. Yeah. Like, and that to me is powerful. And if we had a camp that was accountable, where not only the campers themselves, but everybody in the public could see whether we did a good yeah. job or not. Well, yeah. trust me. Yeah. That's going to put a lot of pressure on, on me and the team to make sure that we're doing a great job. And then if, if we do that, other camps, I think they're going to say, well, look, exactly. how, could, how, how, could we, how could we think that we're going to get people to come if we're, if we're not willing to, to show that we're accountable? Yeah. No, and it, it is, it is uh, the varying responses that I hear from people in the existing camp structures and yep. is sometimes the standard is not that high. So that I love the accountability piece of that. Yeah, it, yeah and you know, we're, we're, we're gonna make sure that those players are getting better. <laughs> because if they're not, our business is over. You have, yeah. <laughs>